Hi, somebody on the EV blog forum uh, wanted some information on the Tandy 1100 FD laptop computer from the 1980s and uh, apparently the service manual for this is not available anywhere online. Apparently the uh, like retro computer community has been looking for it for like a decade or something and nobody has it but Ta-da! I have it in my archives down in my bunker because I used to have an 1100 FD and you can get the fantastic service manuals for the Tandy computers back in the day and I just happened to have an absolutely pristine copy of the uh, service manual which actually has an addendum on the front of it. The service manual actually starts here. Here it is here, uh, 253530 catalog number for those playing along at home. Had a had a V20 process, another 8088 rubbish. Um, uh, screaming 8 megahertz and uh, yeah it was a really nice uh, laptop at the time. So this has the addendum uh, for the Australian uh, version, Canada, Belgium, France, UK and Australia uh, versions. So you know they just added that and it's got complete fold out A3 schematics as well. Absolutely fantastic, right? So um, I wanted to scan this in for the benefit of the community um, and I thought, you know, it's got one of these annoying glue binders so, you know, you can't, when you put it on like a scanning uh, plate, you know, they're hard to like fold out and you break the binding and stuff like that if you try and put them flat on a scanner and of course I don't want to um, do that every single uh, page um, so I thought that I'd be able to maybe like debind this, like, you know, heat up the glue binding on the side and then try and scrape it all off and then get the individual pages and then feed it into my dumpster A3 uh, photocopier scanner um, that I've got. But uh, anyway, I thought, no, I did, I dust off, well I haven't dusted it off yet, it's still got dust on the top. Um, <laughs> my um, Kurzar, I think that's how you pronounce it, Kurzar um, uh, document scanner here and this has an like automated ability to um, create PDFs and also um, OCR PDFs, optical character recognition PDFs, so that you know you can find, so you can search for and find for you know capacitor C502 or something like that, and then you'd be able to um, search it. And it has the ability to take out like the uh, bends, like the warping in the pages and things like that. So it's a camera up here, and uh, you take this photo, and it's got little uh, finger things as well that you can put on the side and then it like so you can hold it down and it erases those automatically um, from the images so you can scan documents reasonably quickly so I think I don't have to damage uh, this at all in order to um, scan it in it, it is quite you know I don't know there's a couple hundred pages there but I should be able to quickly scan through those so I'm going to do that now and it's going to it's not going to produce an ideal result that you'd get from like a proper flatbed scanner if you ripped out the binding and fed all the pages in of course it's not going to be that good but it should be good enough for Australia should be good enough for the retro community out there so yeah I'm going to uh, preserve this rare document and scan it in let's give it a go and it's got a little uh, foot pedal that I can put on the ground and then just hit that and it'll capture um, each page. Or you can do it automatically uh, as well you, where you don't have to use this. So um, yeah, anyway, let's scan them in. So you can see that's a live image now and it actually puts a frame around the actual page so it'll actually uh, crop it. I've already done a uh, test on this and it works okay. Um, so I've scanned in the addendum part of it so now I'm going to scan in uh, the main part of the manual so I can do a flat single page or I can do a facing page like this which is what I want. So you're supposed to put it so that the binding is in the middle there and uh, yeah and then I use my little yellow finger tabs and you'll see that it'll actually uh, remove these uh, from the image after it's scanned in. Of course you don't want to overlay um, something but uh, yeah you keep it on the white parts and then you can keep it reasonably flat and then it does an okay job of actually flattening this thing out. So we can actually do an auto scan um, as well so that's scan automatically after page has been flipped so yeah so I'm kind of getting into the swing of this thing now and hopefully it will turn out okay. Of course I won't know until the end so you know there might be a page that um, didn't work out fine but the addendum worked great and the good thing is I don't have to look at the monitor either because there's a little LCD on top of this thing uh, that allows me to um, see that I've taken the 
snapshot. I, I think the foot pedal is better than the auto scan thing. I don't want it to be making like d decisions about when to take it. I want like control over that. So yeah. And it's only 300, uh, effective 300 DPI resolution, but uh, that's going to be good enough for uh, getting the detail that we want out of this thing, um, especially the detail from the schematics. I've already tested it, and you can get decent detail, and it does the OCR thing just really good as well. But I will have to um, scan the uh, A3 schematics uh, separately, and you really want those as a separate document anyway. I want like the service manual and then the uh, schematics as a separate PDF, so no problems. So there'll be a bit of warpage on the uh, images, but it's going to be good enough for Australia, let me tell you. And look at these service manuals back in the day. They've just got like <laughs> the internal block diagrams for the chips. It's just great. And all the theory of operation and everything. It's just terrific stuff. They just don't make them like this anymore. And it's got a, uh, you can't see it at the moment, but it's got a laser um, scannery thing. Just occasionally I've got to just move it back here because it shifts it over. But it will auto align all of these pages. And at the moment, I only have to uh, use the hold down thing on one side, really, because the other side doesn't really help at all. But uh, yeah, these finger things are really cool. So if I stop talking, I can actually uh, <laughs> go through this really quick. And the LCD on top here um, shows me that there's a red lead that comes on that shows me that's taken it so I know when to flip the page and the rest of the time it's just processing and boom so yeah it's pretty quick obviously not as quick and good if you're a good uh, debind if you've got it debinding but I don't want to experiment on <laughs> the only probably the only copy of this service manual that anyone's ever willing to scan in so yeah I think everyone's going to be happy with uh, just having this. I'm getting to the middle of it now. I don't really need the uh, thumb thing on the other side now. It's not really, it's not really doing anything. And the building light on this thing works really good too. So I'm up to what is six page sixty-seven now, and it doesn't seem like I've been going for long at all. Yeah, now I don't, I don't need those things. It's sort of I'm halfway through and it's just weighted on its own now so and I'm just doing like a flowchart things now so you know like there's no real fine detail in that so it doesn't matter if you have a bit of uh, curvature or whatnot on that it's not really a problem and these are the uh, service flowcharts the service troubleshooting flowcharts so these are like uh, you know important stuff uh huh there you go I'm at my first uh, fold out now and Okay, so assembly diagram, I might, I might actually do that, but I'll come back and do the fold outs because I don't, don't want to ruin the rhythm. So now we're onto the bomb now, which is uh, important stuff. So, and of course, all these uh, numbers, all the component designators, they're all be OCR searchable. So you can you know, search for C, 127, boom, there it is. And it'll show up here and also in the uh, uh, schematic um, as well which is fantastic. Tell you what, the complexity of this bomb is just insane. It really is. Um, <laughs> I don't know how many dozens of pages this is. And they're all in nice big font as well. And we're up to the schematics again. Yeah, so I'll definitely leave those. And so that, that is the full schematic. The other one was just the addendum. We've got the PCB overlay. Ah. Uh, Great stuff. Like, if I needed to get the uh, resolution on the schematics, I could actually uh, te just tear those out and then put them, um, or heat up the binding and pull them out, and actually uh, remove uh, them and put them on my A3 uh, photo dumpster scanner. We've got all the LCD uh, timing diagrams and everything. This is crazy. And I found that it helps if you put like a little kink in the uh, like in the middle of it like that and there and the page actually stays a bit flatter rather than just trying to hold it like that so yeah that seems to do the trick let's put a little kink in there and she's flat as so we're getting there and this starts to get really quick 
once you get into the flow of it, it's great. Actually, I'm probably not doing it as fast as I can because as soon as the red lead goes out, boom, I can change the page and boom. And once you're in the flow of it, it's really quite productive. So pretty happy with it. And we're up to PCB, more schematic fold outs. Oh, disassembly procedure, there you go. How to change the head spacing on the uh, floppy drive and how to disassemble the floppy drive and service it. Troubleshooting flow charts for the floppy drive. This is just incredible. And this won't just uh, apply to the floppy drive that's in the Tandy. This could apply to, you know, that floppy drive is probably used in a whole bunch of uh, vintage computers. So it will be relevant. And the PDF is searchable so people can find all the info. And I think we're done. I think we're done. That is the lucky last page. So apart from the schematics, I got a count of 127 on here. And that, that didn't take me long at all. Would that, that take me 10 minutes? Something like that? Um, oh, fantastic. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. All right, so we're scanned in all the images. They're over here. Unfortunately, um, it has picked up all the other ones which I did. Yeah, there's the addendum one that I scanned in and stuff. So you can see how, though, it's, um, it's cropped the pages. Although the only thing I found with this is when you generate a PDF, it doesn't put it like on a proper A4 page. It puts it on whatever page size it yeah it shows up, I think. But it's scanned in reasonably well. So unfortunately, I've got to now find where I started this new one. Maybe I should have cleared this first. Okay, service manual starts at number 42. Hey, that's appropriate. 41. It is, it, it's a little bit tedious. The user interface could do with some tweaks, but maybe it is a pebcac and I need to use it a bit better. I have rarely used this thing, so I'm kind of just winging it. Okay, so I've selected page 42 onwards and we're good to go. So I can uh, export to searchable PDF. Uh, and high quality. I found the auto adjust actually might um, add a few little smudgy things in there. So I'm, I'm doing keep original image, uh, which will make a, a higher um, file size, so bigger file size, but I think it is uh, definitely worth it. And I'll go for the highest quality uh, PDF quality there. So keep, because no one cares how big files are these days. So. Let's go, uh, confirm. So now it's doing the optical character recognition and this will take a while because as I said, this is not a fast computer. Uh, it is like a decade old, but uh, yeah, I'm not that fast. I'll come back in uh, 20 minutes. It'll have full OCR capability inside the schematic. Yeah, so I'll show you the uh, schematics that I uh, scanned before. Now, unfortunately, these schematics, you can see that like it, it didn't take out the uh, the finger thing here because it couldn't figure out the page size or whatever so it decided eh, I'm not going to do that but you can see that we can go in on the schematic and that is quite usable so no problems whatsoever and if I go say I want to search for uh, you know P, uh, PD4 or something let's see if I can do that there you go well I found pin PD4 there PD4 over here PD4 there look at that so we can uh, you know search the schematic Fantastic. So the OCR actually works really well. And here you go, all 199 pages of the service manual scanned in. So isn't this terrific? Look at this. I mean, you know, there's decent uh, quality in there. So we can, well, it'll, yeah, you know, that's not too shabby, right? Yeah, you get a bit more resolution if you, you know, put it on a proper flatbed uh, scanner and stuff, but no, that is that is more than good enough. And you can see like there's a, like a little bit of warpage on some, like every alternate page, one was warped and one was flat. And it does try and correct uh, stuff like that. Oh, well, I'm not sure if it actually has tried to do it. Maybe there's an option to do it. I, I thought it automatically did it. Um, but yeah, there's a slight warpage, but everything is just so terrific. Just fine. Look at that. No problems whatsoever. And it didn't make a single error on any of these pages. I've already looked through it and it, 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 it's not a problem whatsoever. It, it just automatically detected the pages, it cropped them. And as I said, you can see it uh, actually change. It does actually change size a bit, like a form, like page format. So 
I'm not sure what the deal is there. I, you know, like it doesn't, there's no option to like set A4 page size or something like that. And there's like <laughs> the bill of material, you know, a little bit warpage in the bill of materials there, but you know, that is, that is great. And, and of course it'll find that, you know, R901, F, R901, boom, there it is. <laughs> there it is right there. No problems whatsoever. That's just great. Yeah, I didn't need to destroy this manual, really. Um, you know, timing diagrams, all completely readable. Look at all the timing diagrams. Like, these service manuals are great. They just don't make them like they used to. If you can't repair this thing with this comprehensive service manual theory of operation, flow charts and everything for like, look, here's the read head circuit, right? For the floppy drive. I mean, seriously, all right? <laughs> if you can't, if you can't fix it, with this, then, well, you, you, you can't fix it at all, you know, and troubleshooting, if you've got a read error on your disk, there you go, is IC1 pin 6 low. <laughs> Fantastic, right, how, how to adjust them on the uh, scope and stuff like that. I used to do this back at the uh, Tandy factory, I did work experience at the Tandy Electronics uh, factory, or Intertan Electronics, as the parent company was called here in Australia, Intertan. Um, the same the service centre was just a bike ride, uh, you know, BMX bike ride away from my um, house at the time. And um, yeah, in year, year 10 in high school, I got work experience there repairing Tandy computers. And I would like like align um, a floppy drives and uh, and stuff like that. So yeah, that was, that was fun days. And here's the service manual schematic, including the addendum one. So some of these are doubled up with the European. I just decided to combine them all into the one uh, schematic thing rather than, uh, yeah, so everyone's got it. So yeah, oh, floppy disk drive assembly. Oh, let me put page mode. So what I started to realize is that, uh, yeah, if I left this uh, page thing off, um, like just to the side, like over here, then it would crop it uh, better. So yeah, that that's not the best. So yeah, you can see it just didn't know where to crop uh, the page there, but that's that's no problem. But we can still zoom into that and that's still perfectly usable. There's heaps of resolution there, no problems whatsoever. I wonder if it'll find like that warpage one. So if I go for DA 93, well 93, oh yeah, yeah, it found it, look. No problems whatsoever. And C4, yep, 600, yep, yep. The OCR just works terrific, even on sort of warped uh, text like that. That is great. So yeah, you can see it's just, uh, it's cropped a better once I put that thing over to the side like that. Of course, you can get in and you can like manually crop each one before you save the PDF, but I didn't want to have to dick around with some like that. And you can see, you know, a little bit of the warpage, page warpage in there, but that is, that is terrific. So... Yep, I'm very happy. Oops, I goofed it. You get two copies of that. <laughs> no problem. So yeah, it's got like the different uh, European ones. So this is the European uh, version here. Uh, and then it's got the Canadian, European and Australian versions of the schematic. And there you have it. So, well, that one's a bit helter skelter. So maybe I didn't have the auto, you know, alignment thing on, but I don't care. It's perfectly readable. So there you have it. That's my little small contribution there to the retro computing community because apparently everyone's been looking for this 1100FD service manual forever and I had a pristine copy. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, scanned it in. Didn't take long at all. So I'm very happy with that uh, scanner. It works good enough for doing a, a job like this. And it probably would have taken me a similar amount of time to sort of like figure out how to, uh, you know, get the binding off and stuff like that. And I would have had to not not destroy it, but it wouldn't have been. A, I could rebind it, I guess. But you know, uh, yeah, nah. Just just doing this didn't take much time at all. So if you like that give it a big thumbs up and as always discuss down below and I'll link in uh, to the original uh, files. You can have a look at the PDFs yourself and share them out there with the retro community. Catch you next time.